I bet you didn't know that water isn't just water. Water breaks down spontaneously. Not very often, but sometimes. We call this the auto-ionization of water. Because what water does is one water molecule donates a proton to another. So you get balanced equation, but if you look, you can see in your packet I showed you water acting as a Bronsted-Lowry acid by giving up a proton. You can see water acting as a Bronsted-Lowry base by taking the proton. But if you check this out, you have one water molecule acting as an acid with another water molecule acting as a base. You'll see when I give you the, the K value that it's not very common, but it does happen. We're talking 25 degrees Celsius here for this ion product constant. I'm not going to be picky about that, but you'll see later in your practice problems where we're messing around with this at different temperatures. So this is temperature dependent. Fair enough. But for right now, your KW, and I have that noted below, that KW is what we use for KC for water. We're going to see KA and KB coming up in the next packet, but we've got KW for water, and this is its value. Remember, products over reactants with a 10 to the negative 14th, I'm not getting very much products. And in fact, check this out, because both my reactants, reactants, are liquid. When I write my equation, because remember, we don't include liquids at all, we're just going to have an expression here that says that my Kw my equilibrium constant for water is going to be, and I'll rewrite that. You're very rarely going to see that as H3O+. plus. You're going to see it as H+, plus because they behave the same way. H plus, OH minus. So no matter what, my concentration of hydrogen ions times my concentration of hydroxide ions will give me 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Mathematically true. And this is going to set me up to given one of these values, figure out the other. Given this value, would you describe water as very ionized, somewhat ionized, or very little ionized? Very little. That's a tiny value for K. So let's go down to your practice and just check it out. I only gave you a couple down here. What is my concentration of H plus if OH minus is 10 to the negative 10th? All I do is set it up H times OH equals 10 to the negative 14th, and solve for H+. plus. Check that out in your calculator, and then I gave you H+, plus and I want to know OH. Easy. Something you can do just with algebra, X times that equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. H and OH in a neutral solution, so a pH of 7. If you do that, if you were just to set these two numbers up as equal, like the x squared thing, they're going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. x and x would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, always in a neutral solution with pH of 7. Now, we haven't talked about pH yet. pH of 7 is neutral. pH less than 7 acidic, greater than 7 is basic. Normally you'll see pH between 1 and 14. We will see some in here that are tending down below 1 towards 0 that are very acidic. So if you describe each of the following as acidic, basic, or neutral, if my concentration of the, hydro the hydrogen ion exceeds hydroxide, H plus greater than OH minus, it's acidic. Reverse that. OH minus greater than H plus is basic. And if they're equal, it's neutral. It should make sense to you that OH, a greater amount of OH, will give you a basic solution. OH, NaOH, and thinking of acids, H plus being greater makes sense. The sound of the dog going upstairs. I think she's bored of my lecture. So the pH scale comes from that. Again, like I said, with below 7 acidic, above 7 basic, 7 is neutral. Calculating pH is the big focus here. pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Enter it in your calculator. POH is something we don't hear much about, but you can do the same thing. Get your concentration of OH minus, negative log of that. 
pH plus pOH will always be 14. All I'm giving you here with the pH scale is math fun. These are calculations to do to talk about the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. POH is not a thing we do very often. If I give you a meter in class and say measure something, you're probably going to be measuring POH, pH, not POH. So POH is just part of these mathematical hoops for you to jump through when I give you one number and you figure out the other. To calculate pH, given your concentration of OH, you've got a couple options. You can use this equation to get to concentration of hydrogen and go to pH, or you can do pOH because pH plus pOH is 14. It's mathematical hoops, and I'm going to do some of the problems at the bottom, talk you through them at least. The pH decreases as pOH increases, and the comparisons here, the two columns, I think are kind of nice. It gives you the pH of the solution and your concentration of hydrogen ions that match up with those. Practice. Calculating. And I wrote out what I did. So if there are any I think we need to do, I'll put them up. But I used these equations. If you want to pause and write, this was my setup to get to here. If I'm given a concentration of the hydrogen ion, it's super easy to get pH with my calculator. Negative log that equals. Very nice. In the second question, I was given concentration of OH. Now, I did 14 minus negative log of that to get to 6.4, but I also could have said concentration of H times 2.6 times 10 to the negative 8th equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, solved for my concentration of hydrogen ion, and then done negative log of that. Fantastic. I like this last one. It was easy. If my pOH is 3.75 and pH plus pOH is 14, 14 minus 3.75 is 10.25. Easy. Calculating the hydrogen ion concentration for these. I gave you a hint. 10 to the negative x undoes my log. But if I'm doing this, and this is my equation here, I have to make sure to enter 10 to the negative pH to include the negative log of the concentration of H plus there. So you got to do 10 to the negative pH. 10 to the negative 6.7 gave me 2 times 10 to the negative 7th. For pOH, I got to pH with subtraction. 14 minus 8.44 gave me 5.56. Then I did 10 to the negative 5.56 for my hydrogen ion concentration. And this last one, I used my KW equation because I'm so close given OH. I said H, I don't know, times my value of OH equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th and solved for my concentration of H+. Plus. pH calculations are more a matter of tinkering around, knowing which equations to use, list for you, and to making sure that you're getting answers for your pH between 0 and 14, making sure you're getting answers for your concentrations between like 1 and 10 to the negative 14th, and making sure to keep your negatives where they need to go. You have some practice problems on this today. I don't think they're too tough. You probably can find a pH calculator online to check your answers, or I'll post them tomorrow. And Good luck. This is, I don't think is too bad. Like I said, this is Math Olympics. This is not really in-depth understanding, except that pH measures basically the acidity of a solution.